Hey there, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to have some fun with geometry nodes and I'm going to show you how I made these animations that you see on your screen right now. All right, then let's get right into it. Before we start, I want to let you know that geometry nodes is an advanced topic as far as Blender goes. So I will try to give a high level overview of each nodes that I'll be using in this tutorial. But if you don't understand anything or have some confusion, just let me know about it down in the comment section. And if it's an easy topic, I can just answer you over there. If not, then we can make another video just answering your questions about that. All right, let's press A to select everything and delete it. And we're going to do a shift A and go ahead and add an icosphere in our scene. And we'll add four subdivisions to it. Then let's do a right click shades move. All right, let's move to the geometry nodes tab here. Now, if you're using um, a version that is older than 2.93 for Blender, uh, you might not see this screen. For that, all you have to do is just bring up a new screen and just go ahead and switch to geometry geometry node editor and you'll get the same thing here right now this section over here is more of what tells you the position of each vertex in the 3d space we are not going to use this today so i'm just going to go ahead and close that i'm going to go ahead and press new now as soon as i do that you can see that there's a new modifier added to your modifier properties that's a geometry node modifier and there are two nodes that are added here which is a group input and a group output right so group input is basically the information about your object and group output is the node that is displaying that information like for example if i disconnect this your object disappears right even though it's still there but it, it won't show up anymore so let's connect it back so the first node that we're going to add in here is a point instance node this node instances an object to every vertex that is available in the original object like to give you an example if i do a shift a and add an icosphere in here let's do a right click and shape smooth on this as well i'm gonna go ahead and move it on the y-axis now let's go back to our original icosphere and let's select this new icosphere that we created to instance right now as soon as i do that can you see for each vertex there is an icosphere that is added now it's taking the size of the original object and we don't want that so let's reduce the size here so for that we're going to add a point scale node right before the point instance node and just a short note here any changes that you're going to make should be done before the point instance node is because once you add this node your object is converted into a mesh and there is no changes that can be done on it okay so if you want to make any change it has to be done before the point instance node so the order matters here now i'm gonna go ahead and change the scale to 0 0.1 and i think that is good enough for this so we've got a lot of balls here right so let's play with it a little bit more it's positioning each instance at the location of the vertex for uh, the icosphere but i just want to randomize it a little bit more so for that i'll do a shift a again and add a point distribute node this is actually going to randomly distribute those points along the axis and let's increase it to about say a hundred just to make sure that we are covering all the gaps and we can leave a few there and that's totally fine once we are done with this i'm actually going to scale it a little bit more on the z-axis just to give it those spikes right so this is how it looks now now let's do a shift a and we're going to add an attribute mix node so this is the high level overview for this anything that has attribute in it is actually going to manipulate your vertex properties as far as the other nodes go it will affect your object as a whole right so if it has attribute in it it's going to affect your vertex so just keep that in mind so we're going to add attribute mix node here and let's change this to add we are going to take attribute a so i'm gonna type scale in attribute a so basically we're gonna take scale and i'm gonna change b to a vector and add some value to it right so let's add a little bit more scale like i'll add 0.5 more so i'm gonna go ahead and store it in scale game basically how it works is that you tell it what attribute it's supposed to go ahead and manipulate you give the value that you want to manipulate it by and then tell it where it's supposed to store that value in right like you can even change it to position and it's going to give you a separate result again it can get complicated so you if you have questions just let me know down in the comment section and i can answer those for you now it's affecting everything and i don't want that I want it to be affecting a certain section of it and for that we're going to go ahead and click on our add modifier properties and just add a vertex weight 
proximity modifier here. Let's move it before the geometry node. And I'm also going to go ahead and add an empty in my scene. So let's add a plane axis and move it on the X axis, just close enough so that it's touching the object, but it's not directly in the object. Let's do a tab to go into the edit mode. I'm going to hide the geometry node modifier for now so that I can see the vertex. Make sure everything's selected. Go to the object data properties and add a vertex group here. So I'm going to click on this plus sign and hit assign. Now let's add that vertex group in your in our vertex weight proximity modifier and let's choose the empty as our target object we'll change the proximity mode to geometry nodes let's go ahead and increase the lowest to 0.3 and the highest to 3 and for the fall off i'm gonna click on this invert fall off just make sure that i have a smooth fall off so once i'm done with all of this let's add uh, the geometry nodes back and click on the geometry nodes so that we can see the nodes again now over here for the factor where you see float i'm gonna go ahead and change it to attribute and let's select the vertex group that we just created so we have this here now if i go back and if i select my empty as you can see the more i move like wherever my empty is touching the object is where it's changing the scale we're going to do the same thing but with the rotation now so i'm going to do a shift t on my attribute mix node and add another one for this a value i'm going to change it to rotation and for the results as well let's change it to rotation again and let's to start with let's add 10 to each of these sections which is x y and z so basically it's a vector value it's distributing the values in three different sections uh, the top is x and we've got y and then z now if i move my empty this gives me that effect that i'm actually looking for right so you can play with it you can have different values added to different different axes here and it's going to give you different results right so just play with it you can create many different transitions just by playing with this value here we are almost done as far as creating that animation goes so there's one last step that i'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my empty then click alt g just to make sure that the new empty goes back to the center now select my original empty and then press control and select my new empty and do a control p and parent it to the new empty and we're going to use the new empty to animate the transition effect let's bring up our timeline here i made the animation about 300 frames and because i wanted it to slowly move and create that effect so let's go ahead and add keyframes to all the values in the rotation and we're going to move to frame 301 and let's add 360 degrees and add keyframes again so if i play the animation now can you see it's already giving me that amazing effect now again you can play with it change it as you want i'm showing this to you just for demonstration purposes right and i did tweak the values a lot in the original animation but I'll leave it up to you to do that experimentation. And also you can play with this highest and lowest value in the vertex weight proximity modifier just to change the area of effect. We are done with our animation here and I'm just going to quickly show you the texture that I used in this. So I'm going to go to the shading tab and let's click on new. And now we've got our principal BSDF here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and add a color ramp here and let's plug in this color ramp to the base color and also the subsurface color and let's increase the value of the subsurface to 0.5 and let's also add a noise texture and let's plug the factor into the factor of our color ramp the very first thing i'll do is i'll make sure that i have ambient inclusion bloom and screen space reflections enabled i'll also make sure that my background's transparent let's change the look in color management to very high contrast uh, i kind of like high contrast so i do it in all my videos now let's reduce the scale to 0.5 and i'm gonna do a control t here and okay there is one thing that i forgot to tell you and let me reiterate it here just make sure that you are applying the material to the object that you are instancing and not your object with the geometry node on it because uh, it's actually instancing this object right so it's gonna pick up this material so let's add the material Material to this and now we can see a material a little bit better for the texture coordinate i'm gonna go ahead and plug the camera output here to the mapping node so what it's gonna do is that it's gonna make sure that the texture changes depending on from where our camera is looking at it so let's also increase the detail for the noise texture to all the way up to 16 and let's reduce the roughness zero uh, it doesn't matter for this black one, I'm going to add a dark a reddish texture here. And for the white one, I'm going to add somewhere close to orange. And you can play with this 
slider here just to get the desired effect. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the specularity as well because I'm going for a more of an organic texture. That's about it. That's how I created the texture. Now, if I go ahead and play the animation, you can see it just gives me that amazing effect. So that's about it for this video. I really hope that you guys liked the video and was helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.